In mythology and folklore, a trickster is a character in a story who exhibits a great deal of intellect or secret knowledge, and uses it to play tricks or disobey normal rules and defy conventional behavior. Tricksters as archetypal characters appear in the myths of many different cultures. Lewis Hyde describes the trickster as a boundary crosser. The trickster crosses and often breaks both physical and societal rules. Tricksters violate principles of social and natural order, playfully disrupting normal life and then re-establishing it on a new basis. In short, trickster is a boundary crosser. Every group has its edge, its sense of in and out, and trickster is always there, at the gates of the city and the gates of life, making sure there is commerce. He also attends the internal boundaries by which groups articulate their social life. Often this bending or breaking of rules takes the form of deception or thievery. In many myths around the world, tricksters are honored for the creation of culture. They often cross boundaries, confusing distinction, but they also create them. Lewis Hyde in his book, Trickster Makes This World, wrote, Boundary crossing and boundary creation are related to one another. And the best way to describe trickster is to say simply that the boundary is where he will be found, sometimes drawing the line, sometimes crossing it, sometimes erasing and moving it, but always there, the god of the threshold in all of its forms. A culture is the set of customs, traditions, and values of a society or a community. All of these components are developed or brought together by a unifying myth. As Hyde says, these myths are only stories, and stories are only lies, but lies are all we have. By this we shouldn't assume that the myths and customs of any given society are arbitrary. It's often the case that the customs or myths of a society have made up for some deficiency in that society. To put it in Nietzschean terms, the myths of a society have been devised only for the purpose of meeting certain psychological needs. A trickster is an important archetype in the history of humanity. He is the wise fool. It is he through his creations that destroys and points out the flaws in carefully constructed societies. He rebels against authority, creates convoluted schemes that may or may not work, and plays with the laws of the universe and is sometimes his own worst enemy. He exists to question, to cause us to question and not accept things blindly. He appears when a way of thinking has become outdated and needs to be torn down and rebuilt. He is the destroyer of worlds and the creator of new worlds. What unites all trickster creation myths is the transfer of something from one domain into another. In the beginning, before heaven and earth were separated, the trickster through theft, deceit, or foolishness disrupted the natural order. This caused the separation of heaven from the earth. In one myth, the earth doesn't have a sun, so trickster returns to heaven and steals it, and that is how light came into the world. In an ancient Greek myth, Prometheus steals fire from the gods and gives it to mortals. These actions, the crossing of boundaries and bringing something from one realm into another, is a disruption of the established order. Order is a necessary precondition for any culture, but it often tries to exclude chance and possibility. When order resists change when necessary, it becomes tyrannical. As Lewis Hyde pointed out, violent upheaval increases where no social process allows for change. Beware the system that cannot laugh at itself, that responds to those who do not know their place by building a string of prisons. In some myths, the trickster is sometimes killed or imprisoned after causing mischief. In the Norse myth, the trickster Loki is imprisoned in the underworld. The myth prophesied a great calamity would happen if Loki was bound. This calamity is known as Ragnarok, which means the death of the gods. So these myths show that Trickster is not only responsible for the creation of the world, but he is also the agent of change. This often makes him associated with the hero like in the Prometheus story. 
I want to argue a paradox that myth asserts. That the origins, liveliness, and durability of cultures require that there be some space for figures whose function is to uncover and disrupt the very things that cultures are based on. In one myth, Hermes, who is the trickster in Greek mythology, steals the cattle of Apollo from the pasture in Mount Olympus. Through tricks like making the cows walk backwards and crafting sandals from shrubbery, he confuses the trail he leaves behind. By hiding his tracks and making the cattle walk backwards, he is confusing the meaning of the signs left behind. One of the ways trickster mythology is viewed is as a story of meaning. Ambiguity is a necessary precondition for meaning. When a hunter tracks a deer through the forest, he looks for the traces the animals left behind. Each trace has its own stories to tell, and the hunter will weave these stories together to try to understand the behaviors of the animal. Hermes takes the cattle to the barn where he sacrifices them to the gods of Mount Olympus. A sacrifice is a way of acknowledging the order of the cosmos. In this case, Hermes takes the cattle from Mount Olympus down to Earth. By sacrificing them, he creates a new cosmos. He brought fire down to Earth as well as the animals to sacrifice with that fire. We do not get anything from the story by imagining that there are cows and fire in it. The meaning of the story comes from a transfer of significance. Lewis Hyde thought that if meaning cannot exist without the possibility of substitution, then so long as the cattle cannot be removed from their meadow, they cannot mean anything. This means that if everything was fixed, then there would be no meaning at all. Only the person who has traveled, in fact or in mind, can realize that the meaning of an object or a word is connected to its location or context. It's as if nothing is significant until it is portable. We must be able to move it, in fact or in mind, from one context to another. By moving something from one situation to another and by substitutions, it comes to have significance. It becomes a sign that can tell something. This is why even today people find meaning in ancient myths. Even in a completely different context, someone can get meaning from them. This meaning does not exist in the myths themselves. The meaning is a projection of the one trying to understand it. Usually what we find in myths is a projection of our own interests or values. Nietzsche once said that you will find nothing more in something than what you have put there. Nietzsche was concerned with the problem of value and rightly so. It is the most important problem because it's values that bring the world into being for us. You could go as far as to say that it's one's values that determines what they find in something. The trickster myth is a good example of this because everyone that tries to understand the meaning of the myths comes up with their own perspective of it. Carl Jung believed that the ambiguity of trickster mythology can be explained when you look at them as stories of an earlier state of consciousness. We'll go into this further in a moment. Our ideas about ownership and theft depend on a set of assumptions about how the world is divided up. The trickster uses crooked speech to undercut the truth from which these ideas take their meaning. After creating this murky ground, trickster can remake the truth on his terms. These are lies that put the truth into question. They question or contradict the existing order and can set a new standard. As Hyde puts it, a lie that is really a truth, a deception that is in fact a revelation. These lies question the sort of contingent claims that make up those webs of significance we call mythology, cultures, and ideologies. Once the web has lost its charm, its terms lose theirs. Suddenly they seem contingent and open to revision. Claims such as love always wins, all men are created equal, or Christ is our savior, these are some of the contingent claims that make up our culture. What is included in this web of significance, as Hyde calls it, is partly a result of accident or chance. Hyde compares this deception in trickster myths to the first lies of a child, which he describes as a kind of reality testing. 
A child's first theft and first lie are pivotal in the history of the intellect then. For with them, the child is not just in the world of significance, fantasy, fabulation, and fiction. She is in the world as an independent creator, setting out to make meaning on her own terms, not subject to the prohibitions that protect her. When we talk about the creation of culture, we are also concerned with the creation of meaning alongside the development of consciousness. If the story of the trickster is a story of the creation of meaning, that makes it also a story of consciousness. In his book, The Archetypes of the Collective Unconscious, Carl Jung says trickster mythology can only be understood as a story of consciousness. It points back to a much earlier stage of consciousness, which existed before the birth of the myth. Only when consciousness reached a higher level could he detach the earlier state from himself and objectify it, that is, to say anything about it. It was only possible when the attainment of a newer and higher level of consciousness enabled him to look back on a lower and inferior state. Apart from the creation and regeneration of culture, Jung thought the trickster myth serves another purpose which is responsible for its survival. It was thought to have a therapeutic effect. There was a desire on the one hand to get out of the earlier condition, and on the other hand not to forget it. It holds the earlier low intellectual and moral level before the eyes of the more highly developed individual, so that he may not forget how things looked yesterday. For Jung, serious reflection upon the myth and all of its world variety brings a conviction that can only refer to the evolution of human consciousness, and the full range of phases which this implies. From the initial dimness of a consciousness newly born, lacking any real integration of its components, and having forgotten the way of his instincts, we follow Trickster as his awareness steadily grows forth in ever greater measure. We watch as the self-knowledge of this inquit entity develops, bringing with it strength, remembrance, and a firmer sense of identity. By capturing the light of inner illumination, he gains a full measure of self-consciousness or self-recollection, and can act to benefit humanity. We seem to need the gifts of the trickster most when we ourselves are near boundaries or are experiencing transition states. Periods of major transition seem to be occasioned by an abundance of meaningful coincidence. His energy allows us to break out of old stereotypes, whether they've been imposed by ourselves, our families, our culture, or circumstance. In her book, The Fragility of Goodness, Martha Nussbaum states, The art of living requires the most delicate balance between order and disorder, control and vulnerability.